Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 212 was genuinely one of the most game-changing developments in the entire series, something that holds weight similar to the Shibuya incident in Impact. Sukuna taking full control over Fushiguro Megami as a vessel was not something I think any Jujutsu Kaisen fan had on their bingo card. With Gege Yakutami supposedly planning on finishing things up in about a year, with a shift in momentum this huge, one can only be led to assume the series is heading into its final endgame section. The build-up Akutami has written into this world to achieve this plot twist is immaculate, dating back easter eggs that appear as early as the first chapter. It also speaks volumes about where the endgame arc could possibly be diverging off to. Starting from the beginning, fresh off the heels of Sumiki's body being revealed to have just been a vessel of a reincarnated player this whole time, the personality named Yorozu takes off in a hurry, but not before name-dropping the King of Curses and saying they'd be a great fight. Just as Angel and Yuji turn to make chase, the long-awaited in-chain vow between Yuji and Sukuna finally takes center stage. The in-chain vow, made all the way back in the very beginning beats of the story, dictated two absolute rules. One, that Sukuna would be able to take over Yuji's body for a full minute, on the condition that Sukuna doesn't hurt anyone other than him. And two, that Yuji will forget making this binding vow after it's made. With one minute of control, Sukuna is able to snap into action, knocking Angel unconscious, but ensuring to break her fall safely as to not break the vow. Megami, absolutely confused, despite being in a completely heartbroken state, springs into action and readies Maharaga. Sukuna is fast enough to break the hand seal, and shoves one of his wax fingers down Megami's throat, fusing his cursed energy with Megami as a vessel swapping his essence from Yuji to Fushiguro. Just as Megami once watched Yuji succumb to the King of Curses on the day this all started, Yuji too has a front seat for his best friend's fall from grace. The key to this vessel swap lies in Sukuna's ability to be what seems the transfer of his own soul or personality into a wax finger, creating a cursed object that can be ingested by a person, and thus a vessel in which the King of Curses can incarnate. While it does remain in question how much of Sukuna's power that was able to be transferred over into that one finger, everything so far has gone according to Sukuna's plan. The subjugation of Megami by Sukuna is something that has been foreshadowed since the very beginning of the series. We've always known that Sukuna has had big plans for Megami, since the very moment they both laid eyes on each other honestly. However, for a very long time, we could only hope to speculate what this interest could mean, whether it be his Ten Shadows technique offering some sort of revival power, or Sukuna wanting to devour Fushiguro and take his curse technique for himself. It wasn't a very common topic of Megami actually becoming a vessel. From all the way back in Chapter 1 of the series, the opening spread of Jujutsu Kaisen depicts the main cast, while the focus has always been on Yuji in this artwork, depicted being pulled by the hands, or what seems to be a possible mummified Sukuna in the background. What went under a lot of people's radar was the Gama Shikigami shown with Sukuna's tattoos. Another direct call to this plot twist stems from the key animation that was released around the time Volume Zero movie was being shown, a masterpiece of a painting depicting the most climactic struggles of the Jujutsu world. While the first two rows of Yuta vs Geto and Sukuna vs Yuji always made sense, a lot of people were interested to see Megami and Gojo taking place at the bottom row. Evil Megami was a theory a lot of people cooked up for a long time because of his drive to save his sister, while a lot of people also considered Gojo possibly being a mastermind behind the scheme of evil. It was always a bit of a toss-up to say exactly what this painting meant. Using what we know now from Gojo's conversation with Megami involving how both a Ten Shadows user and Limitless user fought to a lethal draw in the far past, we can see clearly this bottom row represents our final climactic clash of the series. Now, possessed by the Fallen, depicted in this painting as the only character that is turned upside down, as well as being on the side of all the other villains, Sukuna, possessing Megami, will be used using his full power and the Ten Shadows curse technique to finally give us the fight we've all been waiting for with unsealed Gojo Satoru. Definitely not how we pictured an all-out battle between Sukuna and Gojo going. Not only will Gojo have to deal with his best friend Geto being used for nefarious purposes, Fushiguro, essentially a son that he raised from the age of a toddler, will now also have his body played with by ancient sorcerers staying far after their welcome. To think every step of the way as Fushiguro 
grew stronger and developed his curse technique. Sukuna only watched in glee as the vessel he handpicked strengthened his body and ability. The consequences of a story development like this will be felt for the remainder of the series, and will sporadically change the course of events we once thought were going to occur. From chapters 144 to 211, despite minor setbacks along the way, our protagonists had fought long and hard to reach their goals and help Fushiguro save Sumiki. Almost 70 chapters of effort and struggle, amounting to 400 points for the culling game, Angel's cooperation, and the back of Prison Realm acquired, despite the loss of both Yuki Sukumo and Tengen. With the creation of Megami's rule to allow for player substitution and Yorozu's rule change for free entry and exit of colonies, Megami's body was left with the remaining 200 points after everyone transferred them to him for the plan. A newly awakened Sukuna, free from his binding vow, will have full access to these points. The agent of chaos himself is free from all shackles and also able to pull massive strings. Everyone needs to take a life every minute or curse technique removal. Extend the barriers all over Japan. The possibilities are endless. The only things we know for certain are this. With Yorozu completely dissecting Sumiki's memories and personality to a T, it's fairly certain her soul has been overridden completely. Sumiki Fushiguro is lost forever in a void of her own consciousness. Her body now belonging to a sorcerer from 1,000 years ago, clearly powerful enough to be confident in facing Sukuna. Another thing is that Megami's fate may essentially have been sealed. With one in a million chance of being able to survive ingesting Sukuna's cursed object, it's fairly likely the only way out for him is passing on after Sukuna moves hosts, or Megami is taken out by Gojo. The worst I currently feel for is Itadori Yuji, the man who at this point has essentially lost every single person he has ever been close with, having to watch as his mentor Nanami was slain, his close friend Nobura lost half of her face, and now his last and final tie to sanity, Megami Fushiguro, his brother, lost his body to the hands of the cold-hearted murderer, Ryomen Sukuna. Although I don't necessarily expect Yuji to pass on here, or lose any of his strength because of this, I do worry about his mental state. Itadori was barely hanging on as it was, even after Yuji begged Megami not to come, and even though Gojo still needs to tell Megami about why his father quote-unquote ran away. One thing that Gege Akutami continues to not let us forget, after giving us no time to breathe off of Yuki Sakumo's failure, we watch as Megami's wishful thinking and drive launched him and his friends exactly into the enemy's hands. Jujutsu Kaisen's one and only constant is, Jujutsu sorcerers will always end their stories prematurely, and even more confirmed is they will always leave this world with regret. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're new here, definitely feel free to watch some of my other videos that you'll see on the screen. Leave a like so I know you enjoyed this content and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. I really appreciate you guys all watching to the end. This is your second reminder to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.